pick out a way to make a bike really powerful, have really good performance, and ideally for the lowest possible price. So the one that we're looking at is this Rock Rider available from Walmart, 168 bucks, really good bang for the buck, aluminum frame, lots of really nice features. Here's a look at it. So look at the suspension fork, 100 millimeters of travel. Um, it's got an adapter to run a front disc brake if you want to. Overall, really nice bike. So what are we going to do? Step one, motor mods, waterproofing, and cooling. So waterproofing, this isn't something that a lot of people do with hub motors. So you can apply a varnish to the rotor and to the stator, and it will actually waterproof the, the motor. Water penetration won't damage it. You can see this stuff is really cheap. So we're going to do that to our motor. Our motor is a 1,000 watt green pedal direct drive hub motor. Take it apart, spray that stuff on, and put it back together. Put that cap back on, which we're going to have to pop off again anyways, because we're going to put the stator aid directly in the motor uh, instead of drilling a hole through. So here's a stator aid. Stator aid is a liquid ferrofluid. So it's basically a liquid that connects to the magnets of the motor. So you spray that, or you put that liquid in, and it will connect to the magnets and it allows the heat to push away from the inside of the motor. Uh, really amazing stuff. Check it out, Grin Technologies. All right, let's get this old wheel off, putting the new wheel back on. So pretty basic steps here. Old wheel is off, putting some rim tape on, put a hole through for the valve to be able to go through, tire back on, and some air in the tire. Now we've already, uh, cranked down the spokes and uh, made sure that they were nice and tight, made sure the wheel was true. And just to look at how the motor's gonna sit into the frame. Now it's an aluminum frame, so really good idea to run a torque arm, um, just so that that axle doesn't slip out of the frame. And that's not covered here, but yeah, torque arm's a really good idea. So all right, the motor is in. And there we go, looks pretty good. All right. The next step is going to be the handlebars, getting those set up. So as you can see, we got the twist throttle, um, we got the center display, and we got the shifters that are the twist style shifters and they're just pushed inside on the handlebar, which isn't ideal, but at least they still work. Other way is to switch out the shifters, but this works, it looks good. Um, get everything connected plug all these things in. These are the really nice waterproof Julet connectors. And we've also got a light uh, for this setup. So we're going to show you how this light pops on uh, nice and quick, nice and easy. Runs off the battery power, which is really nice. And yeah, the pedal assist sensor. So this is a KT V12L. L means left. This is what we call a splined sensor. So we pop off that crank arm, first get the bolt off, put in the extractor, and then extract the arm off. And these just slide right on, press right up against it. Super clean setup. Get that crank arm bolt, uh, bolt back in, the arm back on. And we're gonna start looking at modifying the controller. Because this is basically one of the easiest ways to get way more power going into your motor is to modify the shunt of the controller. So the shunt is the copper arms that are on the very end of the controller. So this is a 12 MOSFET controller, but you see those two copper bars if you apply some solder or um, a wire there, then the controller is going to push way more current through uh, or into the motor. It's because the way that the, the controller is actually um, applying current is it's measuring a voltage before the shunt and a voltage after the shunt, and it's using that voltage difference to determine the current. So if you add a lot more material, conducted material, that voltage drop is going to be less. So it tricks the controller into causing it to push out way more current. But of course, the downside is that the controller gets way, way hotter because we're pushing so much more power through. About, in our case, it's going to be about double the amount of power. So we're going from 30 amps of current to about 60 amps of current on a 48 volt battery, 52 volt battery, we were using 60 amps, it's about 3000 watts. So it's a lot more. So we're gonna use this thermal epoxy. We pour it in, we fill up the controller with this thermal epoxy, and it gives us about 100 times more uh, ability to conduct heat to the outer shell compared to air. Uh, this stuff works really amazingly well. It gives the, the, 
the controller just a super high heat capacity for one because the epoxy is able to store so much heat but the main thing is that it draws heat away from the mosfets and the vital components of the controller so that they don't overheat because normally your mosfets are going to basically roast um, and then before you really notice uh, anything else going on the the heat doesn't dissipate to the outer shell super efficiently uh, but once you put in this like a thermal epoxy even a really uh, low tech way is hot glue if you fill it with hot glue then it's just giving way more uh, of a heat capacity of a heat sink for the controller and it's going to draw heat away from the mosfets um yeah it's a really good way it's just a, a way to make the controllers way more reliable of course uh it's not going to be serviceable after which uh, can suck if you want if you know a component does go but i mean it's going to make it way more reliable so that hopefully the no components do go and there's not going to any vibration or there's not going to be any wires that come loose due to things like vibration everything is just locked in place now and this stuff is not very expensive um you can find it on ebay it's just called max epc and yeah really good stuff so the way that we mounted the controller is underneath the rack and the reason being is that the battery just takes up so much room in the frame and the goal here was to hide the controller underneath the rack so that if we put a pannier bag or something over top of it we could sort of hide the controller um, away from plain sight so that you couldn't see it and just trying to make the bike a little bit stealthier if you're to pop off the battery uh, hopefully it doesn't look as obvious that it's an e-bike but here's a look at the battery so this is a massive case this is basically the largest available case for an e-bike today so this is the reengine dp7 2100 um it, it's able to fit 70 cells 2170 cells so that's able to do 14 s 5p or a 52 volt 5p that's my son and yeah you can do so 52 volt 25 amp hour is possible with this battery pack this is a new release from reension uh at the time of this filming it's august 2022 but yeah you can fit 52 volt 25 amp hour which is what we're lining up here seeing if it will fit and it does it just fits in this frame which is awesome that's really what i was going for and hoping for so we're going to be using samsung 50e cells they're a 5000 milliamp hour cell so 5p 5000 that's 25 amp hours you can see this uh, 14s 5p configuration and we'll show you how that comes together but you can take a look these are samsung 50e so we got these from 18650 battery store really good place um, sometimes they have cells that are on sale and they offer at a really good value so uh, these are basically the highest um, capacity cells that are available today 5000 a couple other cells have that as well but 5000 is currently the top so this is the most capacity that you can fit and what's awesome about, about these cases is that they still have a little bit of room to mount a bms on top uh, and be able to close the lid some of reentions other battery cases you had to run the bms on the side so we'll show you what that what what it looks like this battery coming together spot welding it together we're using pure nickel strips uh in our case we're using 0 0.2 by 10 millimeters wide uh, pure nickel strips because uh, they can just handle more current um, typically a strip of 0 0.2 by 10 can do about 15 amps so we're doing about i believe we have five uh five of those uh, strips allowing for about 75 amps max current which we won't see but better to overbuild than underbuild and you can see that we wrapped the whole battery in kapton tape so it's sealed with kapton um you know to for safety you know just so that um the battery is is going to be protect, protected from water and we've we've done that we've done that layer of capped on so that when the balance leads do attach um the lead the wire leads are not just sitting on uh the raw nickel strip which could be sharp the capped on is sort of a protective layer and then we use those tiny blue pliers and just pick off a tiny piece uh, where we're going to be attaching the balance lead and then we get it nice and padded up uh, because like i said before this is a pretty the case gives you a little bit more room than some of the cases prior and the padding is really nice because you know sometimes you do drop battery you don't want to be landing right directly on the cell 
So we got it padded up. We got our XT60 connector, which is long enough that it's going to be able to connect right to our controller. Nicely, though, not too much um, extra slack or anything. It's going to be a pretty tight fit, and we're just uh, getting everything mocked up here, making sure that it turns on, and yeah, it does, which is awesome. So about to take this thing for a test ride. Here's what it looks like, just kind of mocked up. And yeah, we went from 48 volt, 30 amp, uh, which would be the standard setup on this 1000 watt motor. Now the state raid is in it. Now it's got the um, the varnish that keeps the motor uh, waterproof. And then the controller is pushing 60 amps. The battery is able to handle it. Got lights built in front and back. One went on the uh, on the back afterwards and, and put some pannier bags on it. Make it look like it's a... Um, you know, uh, a bike that can go grocery shopping. And let me tell you, the, this thing has, when we took it out for a spin, humongous power. It was actually such a fun build. And yeah, I hope you guys liked it. If you guys have any questions, definitely give us a like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you want to see. We, uh, we, we have a lot of fun making these videos and making these builds. We do tons of builds. So uh, we want to know what you guys want to see, though. We want to we wanna offer cool stuff, cool videos. Uh, so again, thank you so much for checking out this video and we'll see you in the next one.